Save the Snakes commissioned me to make a video to help save the snakes. I love snakes. I want to show snakes as part of their environment eating, being eaten, and mention the use of their venom. All in 30 seconds. It'll take me over 30 hours. Let's go! Starting with a storyboard, some questionable sketches, and some colored paper, I jump into setting up my 2D animation table. I'm cleaning off a pane of glass I've taken from a secondhand photo frame and taped around the edges. Now I'm taping the top so I can lift it up like this little flap. It's time for a change of view, and these aren't dragons, but this is dragon frame, and these are old envelopes volunteering to help me pick the sizes of my props. For the serious business, I start with a sketch and trace each scale in pen. You won't see this, but it's a useful guide for me as I'm coloring it in. Erasing the old pencil lines is extremely satisfying. Ooh. So let's put the pencil back with some Prismacolors to help guide me when I move on to watercolor. I'm a big fan of these watercolor brushes, but for darker colors, I like the control of a more traditional brush. Again, I paint every scale for the 3D detail, and this takes some time, but I think the effect is worth it. These specks of white give the scale some shine, and I paint the eye last as a reward to myself for finishing the rest of the face. And I try and give it some fun textures. Quick cut, and we're ready to make a mechanism. I use regular paper and start with some rectangles. I do my best to cut out a circle and I trace it and cut flaps from either side of the second circle. It's a bit complicated to explain, but I think you'll get it. I fold them down and slot them through the hole in that first sheet of paper and then you can kind of get it in there. And eventually you'll see that it works. And so you can spin things off of one sheet of paper. I stick it to the jaw, head, and this snake's got chompers I can use now and adjust later. The body's the same thing, just on a larger scale. I sketch, trace, color, and then move on to paint them. Again, I start light and then work up to the darker colors. I use wet blending here to make the colors fade together. And the snake pattern doesn't depend on the scales, but I still paint each one. I use Prismacolors for some more controlled shadows and detail. Okay. I've had this resting in a big heavy book. This is more yellow than here, and I can incorporate a bit of yellow, so let's do that. More yellow, and then some white dots, final touches. All right, so we've got some details in our snake. Makes it pop just a little bit, huh? Then, ah, this, come back. <laughs> That's terrible. Great, then. Okay, and now I've been thinking about the type of mouse shape I want, and I think probably sitting up and three quarters view is kind of what I'm after. I mean, some of these look like otters and iguanas, who knows, ignore those. But this is probably the type of angle I'm gonna go for. Enough of that, back to the mouse. Here's a prototype of the shapes. Now to pick paper, decapitate, dismember our pattern, play mouse Tetris, cut color glue, reassemble. Then a few mechanisms like before. I've used these several times in the build and they're really simple. Same story. I actually learned this mechanism from Square Type, and I've linked them below in the description if you're interested as part of a pop-up card. I used the idea for a very nerdy card of my own. <laughs> and now back to the mouse. Let's stick on the forelimbs and head. I thought it was done, but it looks so sad, so I beefed up the colors a bit before moving on to the backdrop. I sketched some exposed brickwork on paper with nice grain and went for it with watercolors. Like always, I start light and finish dark and work on my shapes as I go. I do a little wet blending for contours, then flatten everything under some books. After a day, I use some pastels to bring back the texture of the paper and do some final touch-ups. The bottom is a simple dirt path with some stones. I added a footprint to make it look like people pass through here. Finally, set up for the first scene. There's a lot to do here, correcting details, securing everything, checking the focus, camera settings, white balance, but then when everything is right, I can just focus on animating. Now we can animate the first five seconds. I need to make tiny movements here without touching the rest of the scene and wait for the camera to take the photo. At 800 times speed, it looks pretty quick, but even for these simple scenes, it's still quite laborious. I do what I can to make the process easier on myself, but I really enjoy it and I like watching it all come together. But a little over an hour later, I bump the table and I have to restart. 
But don't worry, the scene will be better next time, and we can go ahead and move on. For this scene, I'll need some really clean cuts. So clean, I'm going to use my Cricut. I made a replacement sequence of drops for the Venom and sent them over to cut on some shiny yellow paper. With much difficulty, I also made a cut. I got a head start on a later scene by making this eagle and adjusting the feathers so they would move in the wind. This was extremely satisfying to cut on some matte black paper. The test cut worked, so I cut the replacement sequence too. We'll see them later. Here are the drips in order. My fingers are a bit too chunky, so I'll use the tools to boop them around. I started a drip two frames early on one fang for realism, but that meant I could reuse the same drips for the second fang too. One more element and the scene was done. I was so pleased how the precise cuts made the drops grow so smoothly. This is an oil and For the next scenes, I need a nice outdoor backdrop, and I use acrylic paints and try to keep the colors complementary and warm. For sanity's sake, here's a little time travel, because this took me altogether far longer than I expected. That's when I realized the bird needs to fly across eventually, and I'll need a little more space, so I need to fill in this other bit over here. I'll use the same colors as before, except that's the wrong blue. We'll just put that back. I'll mix the colors, block the backgrounds, feather them out, and get it done. I make a bunch of leaves of different colors as background elements. I watercolor all of them and cut them all out. I assemble the little green ones onto some little sticks to look like some dune plants. Oh, so cute. These eagle toes made off camera have been flattening in this book, but it's time to take them out, give them a bit more color, and then use this amazing two-way glue. When it's dry, it's kind of like a post-it note. It is it's pretty good. It's um, easy to reposition. After lots more work, it's time to run through my checklist for scene two. The question is, how long does it take to grab a snake? I made some guides to help my spacing, and I'll keep these for the real deal. Armed with guides and notes, I start the scene, extending out each toe for each frame. I love this glue. This time, when I have to restart the scene because something moved, it's only at the start, so that's easy. A liberal application of adhesive solves the issue, and I'm ready to go. Let's pretend I work at 5,000 speed. I put all the toes back and do it again. The talons extend. The grab the awkward shuffle and launch. So I was trying some special effects. Here's how that went. Something is wrong. But I got it to work and I'll leave you with this monstrous footage before moving on. I am so excited about this right now. Let's look. Look what's happening. Look, look at this. We got we've got a bulge! Ooh, looking good, last third. What I need for this one is a green backdrop. I've got some greens in here. Okay, I think of these colors, this one is probably my best bet. I'm gonna have a dark bird. Here, let's use my... It's got good contrast and hopefully it's not so bright that I get a lot of color spill, like I might get with these brighter, more reflective ones. So, all right, let's take these two. Organized. These little birdies have been waiting a hot minute for their time to shine. I've been looking forward to testing this for such a long time. Line them up. I don't know if I took the right bird actually. Fluff a duck. I did it wrong, didn't I? I work out the animation frames to make the wind look realistic. Then it's time for the snake in its claws. This part was a blast. But do I want it in the claws or the beak? Very cool, because that would be more 
realistic, although normally they swallow the head and then just have the tail dangling to bring back to babies. Or if I have it in the foot, the foot is grabbing, I could hold there. Which one do I think is better? So, okay, if it's holding the snake, I'm gonna get a piece of string and simulate this. Oh my god, I could just use string. <laughs> I'm so excited! I could just use some kind of string! Okay. That is gonna be so much more fun. I'll be able to actually move the curve down the string and get a nice shape to it. Ah, I have a shoelace! I have a shoelace! I don't have any fun this. Why have any fun of this? Brick wool. Having things on hand is so much better than... Ooh, that could be good. Okay, stretchy material is probably not the right choice. Got a thick shoelace. Okay. All right, this is awesome. I am actually kind of in love with this material. Okay, it must be polyester because this end was singed a bit, but... Okay, now I'm gonna try and singe that down. I got little hairs everywhere. It's gonna be a disaster. Why did I do that on the animation space? Full pack of matches, but I don't want to burn this. So I'm only doing a little bit, so I'm not super worried at the moment. I'll just see how it catches. This part here. I melt the polyester thread to keep it from fraying. On the third time, I got the snake how I wanted, and this animation was so much fun to make. I am so excited to share the director's cut of this animation with you, but first, I want to say a huge thank you to Haral Naik at Save the Snakes. Thank you for taking a chance on me on my first commission. I really hope you like it, and also thank you for letting me record the whole process and share it. It's really been a blast. Now on with the show! Snakes help us by keeping rodent numbers down, but their venom also makes anti-venom and saves lives with new medical treatments. While they help us with pest control, they're also food for other animals, and in this way, are part of the ecosystem. Snakes are important, let's save them together. Thank you so much for watching this long. Crunching down 30 plus hours of footage into one of these videos takes me a unit of forever and it's so much encouragement to see that you watched this long. If you want to support me more you can like and subscribe and you know, a huge thank you to my patrons Tim, Louisa, Fonti and Francine Bonnet. Mwah! Couldn't do this without you. Until next time.